you're good looking. You ain't that good. Relax. What? Speaking of good looking, what what the fuck is uh, how's Don Trump losing or, or or winning court cases against ex porn stars, current porn stars? Yeah. Well, you're only an ex. ex you're ex only an, you're only an ex because you aged out of it. Okay, nobody. <laughs> Nobody weeps for an old porn star. That's nonsense. <laughs> There's a whole MILF division. Uh, yeah, but I something like Stormy Daniels has moved out of MILF. Uh, once, once the scars from all of the surgeries are more prominent than the enhancements, it's over for you. There's no judge in America that's going to side for you. I mean, look, you can say all you want about the Don. The hair is natural. You just, just got to accept it. I'm sorry. Whatever that... What it, it's, that's just a natural, bro. But yeah, okay, whatever. Some I'm of not, it might, some of it is, but not all of it. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it's natural. I'm gonna say it's natural. There, it's just, it's been quaffed and queefed, literally queefed, so much over the years that it just has some weird, strange entanglement all in of itself. When he was on Fallon, and Fallon mopped that shit up. I mean, it might be combed over in some spots. It's still real, but at least the guy never butchered himself. Like everybody from his era did. I'll give him a, a a smidge of credit for that. Stormy Daniels is just a walking mass of scar tissue. So no one sides with scar tissue. But he, but he, okay. So he wins the court case. What was it like? Two hundred and forty, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, something like that. Something a lot like of that. Money. A defamation lawsuit. Who defamed who? What? I, don't, I didn't even read the whole thing. I think. Was she sued people? him for defamation because because when all that shit was going on, he was like, "This she's a stupid whore. She fuck she. There's no way I'd let her piss on me. She's such a whore." Like so, he you said know, that. Like they, I, I'm sure he did. Uh, like, some, did. Did he not? Does that sound I, weird? <laughs> I'll say this: Alan is not directly quoting him, but I'll allow it. Okay, yeah, fair yeah exactly. The, the sentiment is in in my statement. Uh, <laughs> So I'm sure he I'm sure I'm sure he said something along those lines. And she was like, I'm suing the shit out of this motherfucker. And then they got there in court and they were like, you're of honor. She's a whore. And you can't. The truth beats the defamation case at all times. And, you know, when you a whore, uh, that's how that's how things go. But ah, OK. Why. So you're kind of saying. Whatever whatever he claimed she was doing was not outside of her purview, if you will. Like her it her her former employment, something yeah. all of the things that he said that she might be, you know, yeah. potentially have done to him are not outside of the realm of possibilities considering her, her lane of employment. Well I so look, we, we have we should put a pin in this for asking for a friend or uh at some point. So we're asking for ourselves quite frankly. But <laughs> the way that I understand it is I mean, so there's a defamation case. She was at, at at some point she was like that motherfucker defamed me. So something he said or put out in there like defamed my character. Mm -hmm, right. But the the natural defense to defamation and like libel from my understanding and i got you know we got i got a buddy who's a lawyer as well is that you the truth always will beat that out you can't be like hey don't you can't call me a a, a latino whatever 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 slur you want to insert there when if i just am one because then if you're like, you're a murderer, but I am a murderer, that's you. You're not slandering me. I'm a murderer. Uh, you get what I'm saying? Mm. So if yeah, in my hypothetical, Trump calls her a whore. She's like, that motherfucker called me a whore. I'm suing him. And then they go to court and the court and his lawyer's like, but your honor, she's a whore. Uh, <laughs> but but, yeah. he, but he he won the case. He won a case, though, meaning it, it, she owes him money now. Did he counter yeah, well, sue for? Well, she, from what I saw, she just owes his legal fees, which is typical when you lose. Okay. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, so I'm fairly certain it's her case. She brought it. She lost. Mm -hmm. She now owes him his legal fees. Gotcha. Because he doesn't have to pay for that shit. I mean, he's not paying for it anyway, but. Yeah. Know. And and think about this. Her former attorney is in jail. <laughs> Yeah, that Avedi, Avedi guy, the guy that like then tried to like bilk Nike for a bunch of money, and then went to jail after going on all the news circuits talking about what kind of con man and shyster that Trump is. It's uh, I don't know, man. We live in a topsy turvy world, and I really, I actually got into a conversation with somebody uh at the boys' jujitsu uh class the other day about old Donnie Trump, and I was just like, you know, 
I'm not going to say one thing one way or another because I don't do that in public anymore. But I was like, I don't care. I couldn't I can't deal with another four years of that human being being a part of the media presence anymore. Like even if he was like the savior, even if like all other politicians like were, were killed in some like weird kumbaya concert in Ukraine to raise money or something. And then Donald Trump's the last one left. It's like, I can't know. Uh-uh, can't do it. Sorry. We're going to have to just dig somebody out of the ground. I like that, have to run a corpse. I like that you vet it. To, uh, you draw the line at jujitsu class. That's where it's like, I can't, I, I got to bite my tongue on this one. I got to dial this back I'm, a touch. <clears throat> I'm just tired of, well, cause you, you know, you, we, we live in the hushed whisper world now. Mm-hmm. Like you can't talk, you can't talk politics out loud anymore. Like right. somebody that disagrees with you, it can be a fist fight. And I'm at a jujitsu class where I'm on the other side of the glass. Mm-hmm. I don't got no belt on. There's no gi on me. I'm done. I'm done. If somebody disagrees. No gi on me. That could be a fucking band that's name. Pretty good. That's yeah. That's good. No gi on that's me. What I would, that would what I would name my martial arts studio, but I wouldn't allow you to wear gis. You could only wear like regular athleisure wear. You know, gym shorts and such. Mm. Well, they. They actually have no gi. There is a no gi thing, like where you don't wear like the oh, is it the is bedtime there... robe? Okay, I'd see, yeah, I see. I, yeah. I, I, I didn't make... know. Uh, I thought you had to. It I had thought, to be... you know, they, those martial artists get all weird about stuff. Right. I, I'd make it like uh, Street Fighter themed. You know, you could do like E Honda, Sagat, mm-hmm. Ken and yeah, Ryu. I feel, like, I feel like there's not enough variety in colors of gis. Like they're always like white, white cream, maybe you know, like eggshell colored. Uh, well, and, and some then of them like have. A, there's like a blue, maybe a yeah. black. You know, mm-hmm. where's, where's my fucking? Where's the orange one? Where's the you know what's one? funny? Where's the, the gold, ones that wear the blue. sparkly gold one, a glittery gold? One. Yeah, Gold Dust probably had oh. one. Yeah, how do I get a competition wearing one of those bad boys? Right. Well, the blue ones do look sharp, and I've seen the blue ones with like uh, like yellow, like around like the outer edges, and I'm like, damn, that looks sharp, but. Yeah. If you want to look different, because everybody starts out in white, right? It's just a part of the it's the part of the gig. It's part of the culture. Yeah. So if you want to upgrade your gi, you better be able to like earn that upgrade. If somebody's like, "Yo, I want that gi. That shit's sweet," and you can't keep it on your body because that motherfucker's gonna choke you out and steal it off your dead fucking corpse, eh, you might want to be careful how glittery and goldy your gi becomes. That's a good point. That's a good point. There's a good. If you ever watched, uh, you'll see. You can you can watch it anywhere. I've seen them on YouTube's. It's like uh, YouTube's YouTube. It's uh, recaps and kind of memoirs of the early UFC days, UFC one, UFC two. Where they had to they had to do these in like I don't know like small gymnasiums at, at in Colorado because it was the only state athletic commission that would sanction an event like this. There's a uh, where Shamrock is, gets pinned against Royce Gracie. I think in UFC one. It ends up talking about how he didn't realize people could wear geese. You know, Gracie rolls in their red pro wrestling shorts, right? The same ones he wore later on in his pro wrestling career. It was all bummed out about Gracie having a, having an advantage because of the gi. I was like, damn, you can grab the gi. You can move. You can. I was like, yeah, you can grab it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not. You know, I'm going to say it from afar. I mean, it sounds like sour grapes. I hope Ken's not listening. Because even at no. fucking sixty, he could bust my shit in wide open. Yeah. Like, yeah, he, he could gee me in no, half. That was just that was just what happened. It was like people had heard about it. Like this was because Americans had heard like heard about jujitsu, and like they had never really seen it, or maybe one of or one or two of them had actually seen it in action, and was like, "Man, this shit's crazy." And then a guy like Ken Shamrock was like, "This shit's just fucking wrestling, bro. I'm gonna break his jaw." And then fucking Gracie gets in there. And puts him on the ground and never lets him get on his legs again. And fucking, he understands that it's not wrestling; it's it's wrestling on steroids. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just I remember some of those early ones, especially with like Boys Crazy. Like he would sometimes he would just lay down. He would just be like, "All right, come on, let's fight." He just yeah. get on his back, yeah. and then somebody would approach come, him, and then come to me. He would he'd wrap his big toe around their ankle and drag them into the like a freaking alligator at like Disney World, just fucking ready to take a three-year-old on a death roll yeah it really was watching like it was watching like a, a larger wild animal be killed by a smaller one and it just struck like it's like watching a boa constrictor take down a fucking wildebeest or you know like an anaconda it's just like it's just it's gonna take forever and it's gonna be agonizing it's gonna be so yeah. bad that that wildebeest could be alive the whole time yeah <laughs> this is just so see, sad like, gra- uh gra- gracie and guard like whipping his heel around to the small of your back yeah. 40, 40 times in a row. Yeah. Do, do, 
Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of which, I, and I saw, I must have been a Facebook reel. It was Chuck Norris. I I didn't realize he at some point went down. I don't know if it was down to Brazil or somewhere in or outside of Los Angeles after the, the Gracies had opened up a, uh, a, a school for jujitsu. And he went as a guest. He was, you know, he, he was very flattered. He was, he, he spoke very highly of him, but grappled with one. And he was talking about the reason I, reason I bring this up is because a few short weeks ago, Chuck Norris turned fucking 82, by the way, which is incredible. Whoa. Yeah. 80 fucking two. God, God bless him. But yeah, he's you new. Know, I, I was pretty confident in my wrestling, uh, my wrestling or grappling ability. Uh, I was a, not a, whatever one shy of black belt is in, in judo. Uh, <clears throat> and no, he said it was, it just, it, it was apples to pears, man. I got taken down. I didn't know what to do. And the Gracies, and they were very, you know, he, 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 again, like I said, he sung, sang their praises. And this is, I don't know, probably five or six years before UFC won. And those fucking events were so, go back to UFC one and watch it again. They had Jim Brown on as a guest host. Yeah. Like we yeah. have ex football, ex running back Jim Brown, who he looks like he could kick someone's ass. He's going to, he's going to call, going to call color for one of these events. Dude, yeah. there was no lighting. The floor was yeah. just concrete. There was no like pomp and circumstance. There was no music. It was, and there was no weight classes either. I remember watching some like I don't know, like karate dude, like literal karate, like karate kid style karate, like standing in there with fucking crane kick stance, like white dude my size versus some sumo looking motherfucker. And I remember like the little white guy won. He ended up not like kicking the guy in the face, and like you can literally see the tooth twinkle in there yeah as it fucking flies and it's the like, ref didn't know that like to stop the stop it right there he's like oh wait uh i thought they had to get knocked out but yeah, they that's what it was <laughs> 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 the rules. Yeah. you could elbow like straight elbow on the top of the head you could grab balls you could do whatever you wanted there were no rules the, but i will say that the evolution of a sport has never come as quickly as like mixed martial arts ufc like that thing is just taking over wildfire. Like, I don't really watch them, but because they're expensive and they're like every weekend. But I definitely go to YouTube, you know, the day after the fights and like, you know, watch bootleg versions of them. I mean, yeah. it is. It's one of the most exciting things to see. You watch someone filming their television with their cell phone? Yes. And then doing their I don't own, know why. Doing they, their own Jim Brown I commentary? Genuinely, <laughs> yeah. I genuinely don't know why people do it. But I'm glad I'm grateful. I'm glad that they do. Like you just spent like 70 bucks and then you went back and you held your phone up for me to watch it. I mean, I guess they're getting YouTube hits and shit before it shuts down. But hey, and thanks, see, man. You know, I'm a pol- like I'm the total opposite because I, I don't like I would pay it, I guess, if I cared to. But uh, fucking I'm just not I'm not going to be awake. I don't I've reached an age now where I'm just not willing to stay up that late for that. Like even like and boxing's not good enough anymore, so I'm not staying up for boxing. I just won't do it. Uh, I will wake up and watch all of it on Sports Center because it'll be on Sports Center the minute I wake up and I got it for free. I watch the cool parts. Guess what? I didn't have to do watch <laughs> all the boring fucking parts that you guys hung around and didn't even watch either. You just you know drank beers and ate meats and fucking you know dicked around and then you were like, oh, oh hey, that guy got knocked out. Cool. So that's why, that's why I don't do it. It just seems impractical to me. That I mean, all sounds kind of fun, though. Dicking around, eh, eating meats, washing shit, I mean, drinking yeah, beer. It does. It does <laughs> until you're up until like 2 in the morning for no fucking reason. It's on a Saturday. You watch, you watch like 30 minutes of entertainment in the last six hours. Uh, yeah. No, it just doesn't seem, it doesn't seem worth it to me. What would you, what would you prefer? A cross-country skiing race where some fin- Finnish dude gets his dick frozen off? I mean, yeah, probably. That sounds, that sounds legit. Okay. All right. All right. You bring up, mm-hmm. okay, course, guys. Bring up, so, would you go to a UFC though? Would you spend that much yeah, money to go yeah, to it live though? Yeah, it's going to live sporting events. To, like, yeah, that's one hundred percent. Like, I, I mean, I don't like I don't watch hockey, you know, or anything like that. But if somebody was like, "Yo, try to go to Caps game," I'd be like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, let's do that." Because live hockey's cool. Right. Watching it on TV, I mean, it's kind of cool. It's okay. I like I said. I, I think it really just boils down to I have no allegiance to anyone, but that's a different story. <laughs> that's fair. I have I have allegiance well, to my bed at eleven p.m. My well, nice no, like with hot, well with with fighting, absolutely. I've got no allegiances to anybody, so fuck it, whatever. Uh, fucking with hockey, D- DC can't do it. Hate you. 
I, you know, hate, hate your city. Sorry. Uh, so I can't support your teams. I would like, I want to go watch the DC United. Can't do it. Fucking hate them, but I don't, I, they're okay, but I hate them. <laughs> I, I see. <clears throat> He's pointing at a Baltimore hat for those yeah. who can't see it. Middle yeah. class holes, everyone, Murr Allen and Fox man. Uh, we posted this on the official middle class holes Facebook page. This is the news bit of the uh, week. Woman's quote UTI was actually a glass tumbler lodged in her bladder for four years. A 45 year old woman came to the hospital complaining of typical lower UTI. That's urinary tract infection. For you people who don't know symptoms uh, such as leaking. That's and that. That's the only symptom they they, they mentioned. But <laughs> we, I thought you just really turned on, Doc. Uh, but doctors uh, were left stunned when scans revealed there was a gla- there was glass inside of her bladder, encased in an eight centimeter that's three inches wide bladder stone. I had to look up what a bladder stone was, uh, which are normally so small they're hard to see on, by the naked eye. So uh, this woman from Tuznia, uh, she says, "Hey, you know, I did this." She revealed that uh, she used the a drinking glass as a sex toy a number of years before. Somehow then it got jammed up in her uh, <clears throat> uh, urethra. And remember, we talked about a kid who jammed a USB cord up his urethra mm. about six or seven months ago. Uh, this thing, I mean, I'm going to share this, by the way. Um, I was going to say, so was it the whole glass? I was, it seemed really weird. Cause that seems, that and, seems bigger than three centimeters. And here's the bladder stone. This is a the, yeah. the, this is a, like a, an encasing that the body creates around some a foreign a body creates this around a foreign body to protect itself presumably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't know that that like the, the so is that what the story is because the story was not very clear on that. Like, was that a whole glass inside of her? Because yes. that's what you just saw insanity. was inside of her. But then okay. the article says three centimeters. That's not three centimeters. Okay, okay. check us out. Now, okay, scale. so imagine it like this. Okay, you know what walnuts look like when they're fresh off the tree? They look like those balls, right? Yes. But then inside's the actual walnut that we eat. Mm-hmm. So the three centimeters was like the outer edge of like the walnut, whereas the glass itself was the thing that we eat in the middle. Does that make sense? It yeah. like grew like a coating around it. It grew like a crust around the glass. Yeah, no, I, I understand how that how, I understand the mechanism of how it how it occurred. My point is that that glass is clearly like a mid sized tumbler. Yeah. You know what I mean? What Alan uh, is saying is this this which is, is significantly larger than one point one eight inches, is what I'm saying. Like it, are they three they inches. Three three inches and only three centimeters? Uh, I just don't under I like look they said I three believe it, it because the human body is fucking weird. But it's just I, it just didn't add up. That's all I'm saying. It's first it's three it's three inches eight eight centimeters. But still, I mean. Oh, okay. So a little bit different. Still doesn't make that still doesn't check out for me. But fucking okay. Yeah. And the other thing I found interesting about this is, uh, well, I found a lot of it, a lot of things interesting because I had to read about a number of these things to understand, like a bladder stone or not a bladder. Yeah, uh, to 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 understand what that was, but. Uh, WebMD didn't report this because they did, in fact, uh, you can find this case on WebMD, uh, is that people are doing this to heighten sexual pleasure, heighten, you know, to arouse themselves. But when things go away, they're too, uh, I guess, embarrassed to take this to a doctor or an ER. So they just let it sit. In this woman's case, about four years. So a tumbler gets jammed up there and then she forgets about it, I guess. <laughs> or... I mean, are, are the people in Tuznia okay. that sexually like uh, uh, recluse that they leave a tumbler in someone's hoo hoo for four years? Well, I the, here we hear about these cases all the time. So to me, it's not even that abnormal because we hear about people shoving shit in their body, guys putting shit up their ass, and then just yeah, they're too embarrassed. They got a matchbox car. They're like, well, guess it's in there now. <laughs> but this one, it wasn't just that it was like in her vagina. Because that, that's, like, that's like, you know, female prison meat wallet all day. It was in her urethra. Mm-hmm. Now, the USB cord kid you were talking about, like, okay, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a cumbersome product there. But I can see somebody somehow maybe getting that in there. A shot glass is huge. Mm-hmm. How does it get 
and the female urethra is not like it, it's a, a, a male urethra is pretty accessible. It's there. It's tinkerable. You can hold it. You can look straight down it if you want. I don't see how a female, a woman, gets a shot glass stuck in her pee hole. A pee hole. A vagina? Yes. Pee hole? No. Because that's like hole and then little hole. And somehow she got inside the little hole. And that's where it resided for four years. Well, well see, here's the thing. Well, I was going to say, we, we pause because we don't know if she's had children or anything like that. But what we have learned is that I think that thing can get a little bit more malleable once it's pushed a human out of it. Uh, well, uh, adjacent to it. Um, yeah, but not so, the pee hole. Not the yeah, pee hole, though. Yeah, that's what I've always heard because, you know, you, you always hear of, like, uh, like women who have had children, they, like, sneeze and they, they like, dri- they'll dribble on themselves and shit because they can't yeah, hold it. That's no- a muscle thing. That's a yeah, muscle but- thing. Thing, that's though. what I'm saying. So, like, if she's had some kids, you could probably you could probably work it in reverse and get a shot glass on up there. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, let, but, okay, but, okay. Then let's just say, for conversation's sake, what you're saying, Alan, and I I have no reason to believe that that's not true. Sure, after you have children, the urethra then expands. I'm becomes. Just, I'm throwing out a hypothesis. Sure, but okay, like regardless of the elasticity of whatever hole, you know, is chosen to be uh the part of your sexual arousal Mm -hmm. don't you think if a tumbler gets stuck up there you just don't forget about it for four years i forget about things from time to time uh important stuff try not to do it much more in a day two a week um but then just it's like oh tumblers up there oh man i gotta cook dinner i'm going to bed i gotta wake up brush my teeth hey there's still a tumbler up there uh you know what i'll get it out after work and then four years later ah, i have some leaking i guess it could be a uti i don't know doc you, have you done anything lately not lately not lately four years ago maybe but not lately what what country was it in again she's fr- it didn't say what country it was in she said she was cheese from tusnia it may have, may have been. I, I it didn't say uh, if it was in, in country or not. Okay. Okay. Here, here's my whole take on that, though. She had to be. She had to be kind of drunk, right? You don't just like get a wild hair up your ass while you're stone cold sober and start taking a shot glass and jamming it up. Not just like I said. Not just your vagina. The pee hole. Mm-hmm. The pee hole. Women. There, there's some strange statistic. Like seventy percent of women don't even know where their urethra actually is. They've just always sat down and shit squirted that out of them, and they're they're a okay with that. And I'd say for probably a hundred percent of women, that's fine. There's there's a what? there's a stat that seventy percent of men don't know where their pee hole is. Same thing. <laughs> Stop it. But okay, I mean, you're right. It, it, did, did did she realize it was gone? I'm hoping that she was just drunk. She woke up the next day. She said, "Whoa, better clean this place up." Uh, one, two, three, four. Then we have five shot glasses. <laughs> I don't know. And then just went on with their life because it says she didn't even experience any discomfort. Suddenly she just started leaking. She, it wasn't even that there was some like bul- bulging pain, a throbbing pain from this bone surrounding a glass inside of her pee hole. It was that the pee was dribbling out involuntarily. So that's the only reason she went to the doctor. Well, it didn't specify whether or not it was pee. It just said leaking. Good point. That could be discharge, you know, goo, Nickelodeon gack. It could be remnant remnant of the shot that she didn't take. (laughs) Oh, God. Are you trying to get me horny? What are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) You don't know, man. Four years. Four four fucking years. I mean, I get that the the kid who jammed the USB up there... (sighs) He said he was trying to measure his his penis size. No, he's a bad liar. That's, yeah, just a that's true. Lot. But the, the 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 article all tied back to some sort of stimulant or sexual arousal in the urethra, and then mm-hmm. <clears throat> doing doing this type of thing, uh, you know, arouses it. But I, again, I it just aroused or not, uh, and like you said, Mert, yeah, she, the, blacked out has to be the only the the only key. That that you're right. Just what, oh man, something feels a little, little silly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There had to be some drugs. Or, unle- or unless, unless that 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 family and or that country is just so strict about stuff like this, it's like oh, I'm not telling anybody. Mm-mm. Nope. It'll fall out on its own, and before you know it, it just becomes a part of you. You have a bladder stone. 
and you forget that's a good about point. It. That's a good point. If I, I mean, how did it say how old she was? No, I mean, what, I mean, was she okay? Because uh, I'm thinking too. Her name was, Fel- age, it was Philippa Boa, uh, weirdly enough. <laughs> She's 45. Oh, wow. So she's old enough to know better. 40, a 41 year old woman shoving a shot glass up her pee hole. Yeah. Okay. I will say this, though. Okay. What's the proper amount of time? You say, like, oh, maybe it'll fall out. I, and I actually kind of agree with that logic. Like, at what point do you say, oh, Alan's shaking his head. Well, Alan, I'll tell you this. For some reason, I had a twisted testicle one time and I got real nervous about two hours into balls? the ordeal. You two had, hours. You had twisty balls? Yeah, I had a twisty you had ball. twisty balls? I had one nut and it swiveled around the opposite direction somehow. And I was like, okay. And, and it was so weird because you don't realize it, but your balls hang at an angle. And one was hanging at one angle and one was hanging at another angle. And it was the weirdest fucking thing to touch in the world. And at first I was like, ooh, maybe I should try to spin it around. I'm like, ooh, I don't know which way it spun. Did it spin left or did it spin right? Like, you, you spin it the other way. You just twisted everything and, and cut off all the blood flow. So you got a 50% chance of being right or a 50% chance mm. of being Lance Armstrong. Yes, I don't like those. I, I, don't like the, I don't like those ads. I don't like those odds. 50 50. I, <laughs> I be fell into a flop. <laughs> <laughs> I fell into a flop sweat about two hours in. So I didn't immediately go to the doctor. And then even after that two hours with the flop sweat, I stood in the doorway with my pants down around my ankles and uh, actually no pants on at all. And I just like, I just straddled the sky and was like, I'm going to let them dangle until nature takes over. And thankfully it did. I actually stared at my nutsack and I watched it twist itself back around. So it worked. The waiting worked, mm. but that was only two hours. And then I was contemplating going to a hospital. How long do you wait for this to fall out before you give up or not or go to the hospital? Whew. So I think your example is vastly different because it's inside of your body. You haven't introduced something new into your body. And so, yeah, I would probably give that a little bit more time. I'd wait it out. You know what I mean? I'd be like, all right, let's let's figure this out here. But and wait it out. How long, like, though? Creating pain like in your ball scenario. Until I, it was at a point where I was like extremely uncomfortable, like I couldn't sleep or I couldn't do something. You know what I mean? That's probably how long I'd wait. But for this, the minute I so I don't put things in orifices where I can't <laughs> get them back or at least throw them up. They need to have uh, a they need like, to have a string attached to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or and like and if I make that decision, I'm absolutely attaching it to like a tree out back. <laughs> to make sure we'll we'll get it out somehow, okay? Right. But no. So the the with that logic, with that knowledge, no. The minute it disappears, sands tether to the outside world. I'm going to a fucking medical professional because I don't know what's happening. I I nope. I nope. I would not wait at all ever. <sighs> That's just me. That's. Wes, Wes? Yeah, I got I mean, an answer. I I'll, I'll give I, it to you. I think you. Uh... All right, I'm going to give this woman uh, psyche and situation, both family, uh, marriage, and societal, the benefit of the doubt. Meaning, uh, I'm going to be extremely embarrassed if this if this if this gets out. Not not the shot glass, but if this news gets out amongst people, 24 hours, one day. Okay, and if it's not out in the okay. day, you you got you got to get your ass into a fucking hospital. Okay, because I, I agree with you. I'm going to say I've got uh, two parameters here. One full day or until I take, like, a massive shit and expel, like, what I feel, everything that's inside of my body. Anything that could be causing, like, a lodging pressure, you know? Like, okay, maybe i got to take a big dump, and maybe as soon as I take this big dump, this my, my urethra will open up and, <laughs> and a big shot glass will just fall out of my body. So I'm giving it one of those two things, a full day or a giant shit, whichever comes first. Because there's been situations, never anything in my body, but like, I don't know where, I don't know, you're trying to, you're trying to like grab something. I, I'm, I can't think of a good example, but like something slips out of your hand. And you're like, oh no, oh, it's gone. Like there's going to be an effort that you put forth before you completely give up and then like shut it down for the day. So, yeah, I give her, I, I don't know. I, I feel like she shouldn't wait four years. That's definitely not the answer. Yeah, that seems a little long. <laughs> seems, seems like a bit of the uh, the marathon track there. 
A lot of hoping <laughs> <Yeah>. and praying. <laughs> Idiot. Oh, uh, shit. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we listen, I, we're going to, I don't know. If, I don't know. what. We're, there's no follow up to this. It's just the, the fact is that, that human beings are going to jam shit in themselves <clears throat> all across the universe uh, throughout the entire time that we're here on this earth. But folks, yeah, if you're putting stuff up your, your urethra, we urge you 24 hours. That's that's the tops. Alan's case, yeah. everything has a string attached to it, and if it doesn't come out, he's going immediately, right? Yeah, they, no, don't wait twenty. Don't listen to these white devils. The fucking go. <laughs> that's go go to a medical professional immediately. Yeah, if you have lost contact with a, with an item inside of yourself that you did not intend to, please go see a medical professional. And I also I also think. A medical professional, if you just tell them the truth, like, yeah, look, I was trying to get off, okay? I was just trying yeah. to get my fucking jollies off, and this happened. I'm an idiot. Okay, yeah, sit down. <laughs> yeah. You, you have insurance? Look, I'm also a big proponent of, like, don't hide shit from your doctors. Look, this is another PSA. Just tell them, man. That's yeah. what they're there for. Yeah. Don't hide stuff. If you hide stuff, that's how you hide cancer, and then you die. Like, don't do that. Tell them stuff. If you make shit up, that's how you become a story at the dinner party. I had this motherfucker come in with a shot glass in his piss hole, right? Yeah. I said, how to get in there? He's like, oh, well, I was mopping the floor, and all of a sudden, both my slippers fell off because my cat ran between my legs, and I did a complete and total cheerleading squad split right on a shot glass. I was like, whoo. We're missing one. Oh, well. <laughs> Just, yeah, I was trying to shove a shot glass up my pussy. Yeah. Okay, let's get it out. <laughs> Make the story get boring. Yeah. No, yeah. actually, yeah. The, the, you, you'd be lying, Murr, because she shoved it up her urethra. <laughs> <laughs> don't lie to your doctor. Just say it. If, if you tell the truth, they don't have a story to tell anymore. Okay, it's because they get a thousand of these, and nine hundred ninety nine are going to tell a bullshit lie. Be the truth teller. Don't be the dinner party story. Yeah, don't wind up on this podcast. I will say that I like to think that I don't wait at my doctor's office as much because I'm straight up with her. So we're we knock shit out. We get it done. I don't have to wait a whole lot. I'm not sitting in the waiting room. Taking her. She's not like, oh, God, this motherfucker's going to come in here talking about how he put a shot glass up his pee hole. And fucking, <laughs> uh, nope. Just, hey, hey, Doc, how you doing? Up. Oh, I'm just still fatting it up over here, not having lost much weight. Uh, everything else is pretty good, though. All right. See you later. Take this blood. Make sure I'm alive. Bye. You, like, could, you could say you could lie and say you, your wife put it up your pee hole. Gosh, he's such a trickster. Well, I was sleeping. I didn't feel it. <laughs> He's got, I got such a huge dick. Well, that's a lie. I'm sorry. A huge pee hole. Look at it. <laughs> that's that's a lie. I'm lying too. I'm lying about that. <laughs> Shit. Tell the truth to your doctor. Don't put yeah. stuff up your pee holes. Uh, Unless you're, I guess. But you know. All right. Uh, we're moving on to uh, what we'd like to call friend or foe. Ooh. Here you go, my friends. Uh, Disney, back in the news, possibly for a good reason, possibly for a bad reason. Here's your friend or foe. I'm going to read a news story to you. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Friend or foe, fans will soon be able to call Disney home. The company announced the launch of Disney Story Living, a new community for fans of Disney that incorporates the company's brand of magic. Quote, these master planned communities are intended to inspire residents to foster new friendships, pursue their interests, and write the next exciting chapter in their lives, all while enjoying the attention to detail, unique amenities, and special touches that are Disney's hallmarks. Disney Imagineers are going to develop the communities with the concept of everyone lives in a community that tells a story. So basically, what Disney's planning on doing is having sheltered communities away from the rest of civilization that creates the theme very much like the Truman show. And you can elect to live there friend or foe friend. This sounds like a wonderful place to move the entire family and just kind of get away from it all or foe. This is a corporate cult structure, just waiting to brainwash the fans that have already been brainwashed through years of multi-million dollar entertainment. Wes. 
<sighs> I mean, I, 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 I don't, I, I can't say I'm indifferent because here's the thing. I'm not going to spend my money on something like this. I'm going to say friend because it's corporate America. Okay. They're not doing anything illegal. And if some shyster out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin is like, God damn it. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to live in the fucking Truman show. I'm going to live in Mickey in uh, duck, Mickey duck land. And, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and, duck and spend three quarters of my inheritance or all my fucking capital on something like this. So be it. Disney's a cash cow. Okay. That's it. They, <clears throat> you go down there, you spend a fuck ton of money and that's the way it is. And that's the way it's become. And I, and I did not realize this. Go ahead, Murr. Well, what I want to say is the difference between what you're talking about, the immersive Disney experience that you buy as a vacation package. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one thing to create entire communities where this is now your life. This is where you live now. You don't just visit the Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. You live in the Magic Kingdom. They're talking about the architecture being that of a Disney movie. They're talking about having basically artificial rivers and ponds that are the color of blue Gatorade for you to splash around in with your little tyke. You're going to go down to the local Starbucks and be like, howdy ho, Mr. Fox. You getting the same today? Yuck, yuck. That's what they're talking about. Amen. Like to me, that, okay. Free will. Free will. Human beings have the they're right to do that. They're stealing your free will, Alan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a foe of this. This is a uh, look. Uh, I've told you guys I'm a video game uh, aficionado. Uh, this feels this gives me a lot of a. Uh, uh, there's a series of games called Fallout, uh, and you know, as you might expect, they're about post uh, nuclear war Armageddon style fucking landscapes. Uh, but a big crutch of the series is that. Prior to this happening, these these bombs falling and wiping out humanity, this company goes around selling admission into vaults where you'll go and you'll live this idyllic life where, you know, you'll just hang out down there with everything you'll ever possibly need until it's time to come resurface and populate the earth. And all of those motherfucking vaults were goddamn experiments. Every single last one of them, you either ended up fucking experimented on in a laboratory or like cryogenically frozen or fucking any number of fucking things you could possibly think of. And it sounds like Disney's starting to fucking experiment on communities of human people. Uh, so, no, foe, way against it. I already think that grown adults who spend most of what should be their retirement savings to go to fucking Disney every year is really fucking weird. But this is super weird. I got to tell you. I'm a friend. Alan, normally you don't go on like two minute fucking rants. I'm a friend of that. That was good. <laughs> yeah, man. You're a little more reserved. I, I'm, I'm a friend of this new Alan. <laughs> well, Alan, Alan, like you said, totally different example than I have, but crawled inside my brain and pulled out all of my thoughts because I'm thinking of, um, oh, who is David Koresh down in Waco, Texas? Did any of those people inside that encampment, did they ever complain? No, maybe he had a lot of child brides. Do we frown upon that? Sure. Was it an, an inclusive community where everyone was kumbaya and getting along? Yes, it was. And what do we do? We sent Janet Reno down there with smoke bombs and gasoline, and they burned the fucker to the ground. What's the difference between a bunch of people that want to live a certain lifestyle in their own way in Waco, Texas, and then disnifying it? There's no difference. These same people oh, that Alan's talking about that spend their life savings to go to Disneyland and Disney World every year, these are the people that are going to buy the community. They are going to check out a real life, and Disney is going to give them the ticket to do so. They're going to give them the fallout shelter to not exist inside of America anymore. Like, the world could be crumbling down around them, and it's going to be like, oh, it's a wonderful world when we live in here in Disney world. You know, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, that's exactly right. Like, like, I, I so, think so, a perfect example is like, they're going to get, these are the fucking people who are our age, who you see like once a summer and they're like, check out my new ears. We're going to <laughs> Disney again. And it's just, they're the fucking wackest people you've ever met. And they're Disney's going to bamboozle them into going into, like he said, like we said on off the top with Truman's show and probably pay 
you know, half a million to a million dollars for a home in Scottsdale, fucking Arizona, because they can. It's just, it's well, sad. I mean, so, so you, okay, so, okay, what was it, Murray? You said they're, they're going to do, they're going to go to this place and they're like, whoa, what the wonderful world of Disney? Like, do you think yeah. they want to wake up and come downstairs and have their grandchildren, like, egg suck, boom, and kick them in the shin? Maybe they just want to go to the Disney and have Goofy parade around. But but it's the fact that it's a the, the Imagineers, the people that work there are going to be storytellers. Actually, mm-hmm. let me grab the story out of the trash here. Um, it says, "quote <laughs> Story is at the heart of everything you, we do." You're so and we f- love bringing. You're so faux. You threw in the trash. <laughs> yeah, I was already disgusted by it. <laughs> <laughs> story is at the heart of everything we do, and we love bringing authentic places to life to immerse you into those stories. We dive deep into the history and culture of the place itself, and we're really inspired by the surroundings. And our Disney Imagineers are going to create a universe just for you. So they're going to... What, happen, what happens when Meemaw has cancer? Uh, yeah. Is, is Meemaw going to be shuffled out of town because she's depressing and town is not? Well, that doesn't matter. Well, listen, uh, Meemaw's hospice care doesn't really match with... Um, you know, our atmosphere and the tone of what we're trying to do here. So, um, yeah, we're going like, to have to kick know, her. Do you know sand. how long it will take for a fucking, like, a Disney cast member to get chopped in the throat when I'm hungover trying to get a fucking, like, sausage, egg, and cheese from McDonald's? Like, it will happen so fuck. Like, it would be a miserable place to be for a normal person. That's what I'm saying. It could only be these weirdos who love Disney that go. Or people who, or like the homeless, because experiments. Right. Guess, so, so the, the the thing of it is, is that you're worried about these weirdos or these quote unquote people that you describe as weird. You're worried about these people going to a place like Disney and being mind warped, even though you don't like them. You want them to sit no, here. Not really, no, you, not really concerned about them whatsoever. Uh, I mean, this is probably a fitting end for them. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but my concern is that if we allow Disney to just start all willy nilly making communities where they script everything and control everyone's lives, uh, eventually we get to the part where those communities turn into some sort of camps and we yes. don't like camp. The word camp is just bad. It has a bad connotation. Uh, so yeah, it's just like Disney's getting a little above the britches is all I'm saying. Yeah. Listen, there was a man named Jim Jones and he had a bunch of like-minded people that joined into his fun and frothiness and they moved down to a little place south of the border where they all drank a big old heaping helping cup of Kool-Aid because Congress came down and saw that they were actually being brainwashed. This is like on the nose brainwashing. Like Disney is like literally they're telling you they're opening the playbook and saying, here's what we're going to do. We're going to let you live that life that doesn't actually exist. We're going to pretend that everything is holly jolly all the time. Mm -hmm. And we're going to ask you to pay us for this experience. Life is not an experience. Life is life. Good, bad, ugly. It's life. I don't think, I don't, you're right. Free will, do what you want. But for some reason, we do shut down cults in America. This just sounds like a corporate cult. And I don't see how we're allowing them to fucking move forward on this. Saying, and look, we this could be a little bit of a stretch, but I'm saying Walt, Walt, the man, Disney had himself quite a few strong opinions about groups of people. <laughs> so all I'm saying is, is if you were to, I don't know, hypothetically sequester a bunch of people who worship him as a deity and then maybe pump out some sort of storyline day in and day oh. out. That oh, storyline. Okay. That that was for them to maybe participate in and partake in. You could, at some point, influence a mass amount of people to think a certain thing that maybe Walt Disney once thought. Uh, if you see where I'm going with that. So <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah. totally see where you're going with that. Yeah. <laughs> Look, yeah, I'm no. saying there's a slippery slope. Is all I'm saying. It's a buttery then, hill. <laughs> and then and then everybody that disagrees with your ideology. You'll make a camp for them where you can concentrate their entire mm-hmm. population into that area. Yeah. And then maybe right. pump in something more than joy. <clears throat> It'll be a Universal Studios camp. Yeah. Probably. That's a good point. 
Hey, listen, I mean, maybe is there an offhand chance we could see Minnie Mouse's tits? I'm sure it's on the internet. I'll bing it for yeah, you. There's definitely, you don't there's have to go to this. You don't have to go to this uh, community <laughs> to see this. There's definitely there's definitely a category for that, that on X Hamster. Right, <laughs> along but with uh, Stormy Daniels I, Milf, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what I did want to bring up to you guys, based on this, though, I'm I'm not saying that the entire idea is completely terrible. I'm just saying that this particular idea is wildly tragic. The type of people that that are going to move to this community they should probably be excommunicated from this country in the first place. One of the ideas I had a while ago was Walmarts. Walmarts get built in, you know, centralized areas of communities that already exist. Why doesn't Walmart build a town around a Walmart? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, uh, they, they could. Uh, <clears throat> it, I mean... Uh, I guess not. I guess there's no, there's no, nothing stopping them. I don't know. I don't. It sounds silly though. It's why, why are you being so dismissive? What I'd like to do mm-hmm. is I'd like to contact the ghost of Sam Walton himself, and I want them to build a Walmart superstructure, not a super center, a super fucking structure, like something the size of like Harford Mall. Okay, not let's not get too big here, and then just spiral off of that an entire community in like a circular fashion. Just find a place. Because where do you go to shop? I go to Walmart. Well, you know where I live. That's the only place to shop anymore. There's no local grocery stores. There's no Walmart. You build a Walmart, and then you build an entire town just stretching out from that Walmart. All roads lead to Walmart. I think we have uh, we have a few of those. There, uh, Alabama, uh, fucking uh, Arkansas, I think is one of them. Mm. Uh, yeah, so we have we have big, large communities centered about around Walmart's already, I believe, in this country. Uh, also, that's uh, it's crazy because, like, I always think about Western Maryland, where we only had Walmart's. You know what I mean? We live we live closer to civilization than you, uh, Mar. So yeah, I don't know. I haven't been in a Walmart in like two fucking years, literally. It's been Dang. a minute. It's been a minute. No, I don't. I'm sure it hasn't changed. I used to work at a Walmart. Fuck, yeah, no, that's yeah. Remember, he used to uh, used to take like money grams. Yeah, that's right. I used to take returns and stuff. Ten G's at a time. Be like, would you would you would you take this air mattress out into your truck and fuck on it? That's cool. (laughs) (laughs) Just give it here. That's not a manufacturer (laughs) defect. That's cum, sir. Yeah, that's that's this is jizz. (laughs) Jizz. Oh, you got a shit. shot glass. You got a shot glass lodged in the blowhole. What is that? <laughs> oh, that came from uh, Susan Jurethra. Whew. Had a good time. Oh, shit. All right. Well, I think it's time for that uh, magical time of the week that we call Fun Fact Friday. That's right, my friends. Time to fill your heads with a little bit of knowledge. It's time for five fun facts for you fuckers on a Friday. Brought to you, of course. By the Shin Splints Recovery Group. If you got some pain below the knee and above the ankle, you can find yourself. The Shin Splints Recovery Group on Facebook, one of the fastest growing nonsensical misinformation web pages on the internet. The Shin Splints Recovery Group. It's time for OMG Facts, your fun fact Friday, starting with Did you know the color green used to be considered unlucky in Ireland since it was associated with fairies? Who stole children and brides? Mm, I that wonder is what, a drunk society. I wonder what the turning point was. I wonder if uh, you know, with, you know, it obviously had to be slow and gradual. Yeah, probably um, the children were running away because the parents were drunk, and uh, the brides were running away because the husbands were drunk. I don't, I don't know what. It was associated with fairies who stole children and brides. That's the weirdest thing to be concerned about. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, old timey fucking <laughs> societies like that were were very strange. Yeah, but they came okay, like uh, uh, Santa Claus, right? Um, he he comes from like possibly a real man in Turkey who would give kids presence on what was assumed Jesus' birthday. So mm-hmm. fantasy based in fact. The color green used to be unlucky in Ireland because it was associated with fairies who stole children and brides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where is the where is the slight fact that creates the fantasy? 
Oh, no, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying the slight fact, but, uh, well, this may be just because I've been watching a lot of the show Vikings recently. Uh, so there's just a lot of pagan, of pagan stuff going on. And, and so I think that's what this is. You know, they're like, oh, don't, don't do that because you'll anger fucking Loki's son. And like, you know, because like fucking paganism was all just like weird and mystic until we were like, all right, one fucking one Arab guy that we've decided is white now is definitely the son of God who fucking lo- both loves us and hates us all at the same time. Like until we created that whole thing. Fairies that stole children seemed like a reasonable explanation for kids running away into the woods. I don't know. That, that look, I've been watched a lot of Vikings, and that's what I've taken from it. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> and it's it it it, it, uh, it may be one of those things where like uh, like a folklore on top of a folklore on top of a folklore, and they just like mm-hmm. like they don't these people don't even understand their own lies. Like uh, children, uh, what about brides? Oh, yeah, of course, brides too. You bet. That, that's those suckers will take anything. Don't wear green. What? Mm-hmm. If I'm getting married, I'm gonna fucking get stolen. Possib- possibly, and all the children at the wedding too. <laughs> Go on, I've seen it. You've seen it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I've, someone told me about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I went to a wedding once where somebody <laughs> said at another wedding all the kids in the bride disappeared. <clears throat> Berries. Was, was it the McKinley wedding? <laughs> yep. Exactly. Mm. It was the old hula hands. I I read about that. (laughs) God, it's it's things like this that make me wish I did have a time machine because I could go. Man, you would you could just own an entire nation. I just feel like if you just didn't fuck up too hard and you just expel some like legitimate logic and knowledge upon the whole civilization of people, and apparently. These people apparently we haven't evolved that much in the last like ten thousand years. So in that ten thousand year window, you're technically talking to quote unquote your intellectual equals. Man, I would love to start a Disney cult in Ireland in like the sixteen hundreds. <laughs> be fucking rolling in it. It would be all green, right? Every last drip right. drop. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> Did you know an astronaut can be up to two inches taller returning from space? The cartilage discs in the spine expand in the absence of gravity. I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah, does it also does it have does that have something to do with uh, um, like my, uh, <clears throat> like work, the work working out in space in terms of like like the degenerative stuff? No, mm, no, I don't think so. I mean, you lose muscle mass in space. Mm-hmm. I don't think. I don't think working out because the working out doesn't really work because you don't have the same resistance and shit. Well, they tr- they try. I, yeah, but it's not the same. Right. They have they have special machines up there, and I actually watched a documentary about working out in space. <laughs> <laughs> how lame! It's how lame my life is. They have to do. They they have these specialized machines, and they're not allowed to be like attached directly to the space station because once you start getting into a rhythm. If that rhythm passes itself on to the space station itself, the state the space station will actually start to flex back and forth and like rip itself apart. Like you remember the foot the footage of that bridge that starts to like meet the harmony of the wind speeds and yeah. like wobbles itself to death. That's what'll happen to the space station. And because there's no gravity, you won't hear it happening, you won't see it happening. All of a sudden the fucking entire hall will just crack in half and you'll be a fucking yeah. dead vacuumed out body in the middle of the fucking blackness Mm. there was a uh physics teacher i had in high school one of his biggest criticisms of star wars was uh you wouldn't be able to hear the explosions you can't hear the damn you can't hear the tie fighters blow up there's no gravity there's no sound it's like wow man there's no air waves i get that i just you, you have to suspend some belief in in star wars come on i get it yeah oh you mean fucking sp- space spaghetti western yeah <laughs> i think we could suspend some belief for fucking right. space spaghetti western and then there's a black hole and then there's a professional uh springboard diver who jumps off and goes in the middle and brrr, spaghetti spaghettifies th- through the black hole spaghettifies, <laughs> boom i'm glad greg luganis will live in infamy on this podcast forever <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Did you know inside a cow, 
Milk's temperature is 101 degrees Fahrenheit. I didn't, but what's what's so significant about 101? I knew it was warm, but no. It's just, just a fact, Wes. It's just a fun fact. <laughs> people people think, think it's going to be room temp or, or nice nice and cold. Dunk a, dunk a chocolate chip cookie in it right out the teat and go, hmm. Well, I guess there's just something about, like, you know, that no matter no matter what, you know, you get yourself, like, a nice glass of milk straight from the teat. It's always going to be, like, nice and warm and creamy. I don't know. Maybe that maybe that's the temperature that you got to keep milk uh, fresh out the hole so that it doesn't like, you know, start to separate. I don't know, because we're 98.6. Yeah. So we're always getting something that's like three degrees warmer than us. So it's just like comforting, something comforting about that. I think that's exactly well, you're on you're kind of on the track is that I think it's because that's their body temperature and like the body temperature of a calf. So it's not a shock to their body. You know what I mean? It's like a it's like, have you ever had a coach tell you to drink, like, not ice cold water, but, like, room temp water? You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. Which I don't know that that actually does anything, but it seems to kind of make some sense. Uh, it'll, it'll cramp you up. Yeah. It, yeah. It'll hit your right. gut, and it'll make your muscles contract. Anyway. My, right, my, my, my old uh, baseball coach, who was a plumber, he knew a lot about uh, pregame, uh, pregame hydration and stretching and plyometrics and physiology. Knew, knew all that stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember. I, re- I very vividly recall of a very specific circuit of stretches that you taught us in, in college one day, Wes. Do you, do you remember this? <laughs> uh, did, did, did he, wait, did you teach? Did you teach him the Hammond uh, stretches, or did you teach him something else? Uh, I mean, no, it wasn't from the uh, it wasn't from it wasn't from the Hammond uh, playbook. It was more. Um, uh, try to think. It was what the. It's Kama Sutra uh, related. <laughs> the ancient Indian stretches. <laughs> uh, <laughs> me and my close friends got to do them in front of our other close friends for entertainment. <laughs> wow. Uh, hilarious. Clothed. Peace. <laughs> Of yeah. course. I'm not an animal, goddammit. <laughs> what do you think we are? Heathens? <laughs> Did you know the Basenji is a unique breed of dog? It can't bark, but instead it yodels. Damn. Yod- I've heard this. Yodeling dogs, yeah? Yeah. Huh. Didn't didn't know didn't well one of all I, I didn't know. I didn't know the name of that or the breed of that dog. Uh, didn't surely, sure as hell didn't know that there were dogs who couldn't bark but just yodeled. Does it sound like they're from from a Ricola ad? I'm gonna look one up, like, dude. Like, what a strange fucking like millennial old science experiment the dog is. Like every dog's genetic code goes back to a standard fucking like timber wolf. Mm-hmm. But instead, we got the shit out pug- of it. Yeah, we got pugs that can't breathe. We got bulldogs that can barely walk. We've got dogs that can't bark. Like, what have we done? What kind of fucking what kind of monsters are we? <laughs> Isn't there like Akitas can only do uh, a certain a certain tone of howling, and they can't bark. Whereas, like certain, like, what are like, they? Uh, are Akitas. Akitas. A K I T A. Yeah, so uh, I am just out. Let me interject here. I am an aficionado of all things dog show. So if there's a Westminster Kennel Club or like fucking something like that, I will watch that shit because it Mm. is mad interesting to me. Uh, But yeah, those dogs are fucking wild. I think they're like one of the oldest registered breeds, if I'm not mistaken. This is what I've picked up on when I see them in there. I, I see this like the same. It's got to be the same one in all the dog shows. Um, but yeah, I was looking at uh, actually looking up dogs that don't bark the other day, and that was on there as well, the Akita. Uh, but I've never heard it. I would like to hear the yodeling. All right, let's see. I've got a video up because I can't share because I'm an idiot, but I have it on my phone. So let's see what we get here. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Yeah, maybe we don't want one of this. <laughs> Damn, my boy held a note, man. Jesus Christ. 
Sounds like a modern day Mariah Carey. <laughs> hmm. oh, what were they called again? Go. One more time. Sorry. I want to hear that. I want to know uh, the name. Basenjai. Basenji. Basenji. Okay. Basenji sounds right. They're from Africa. So I think that the that checks out. I'm throwing stuff away real quick tonight. Sorry about that. Uh, finally, did you know everyone has a unique smell? Identical twins smell so alike that most times only trained dogs can tell the difference. Mm. I mean, I, I don't. Okay. No, I didn't know that. I don't doubt. It doesn't seem odd that uh, every person has their own unique smell. But I don't know. Th- this particular one year flip calendar is very. Uh, very twinsy related. You know, you had the whole thing about identical twins okay. having ideas yeah. that are that are brothers and fucking each other. Well, twins are okay. I I I, I agree with you, but I will say that twins are fascinating, man, yeah. because they're the only like genetic. You okay? We haven't gotten to a point like with modern science where you can recreate the exact same genome. So the closest we got is like nature's fucking twisted joke. And that's identical twins. And, and, and I didn't, I didn't know that people had. A, what if this though? So what if the identical twins ate the exact same diet? I have to assume that even if you and I, Wes, like decided like we're gonna eat the same foods, mm-hmm. you're gonna eat a different ratio of those foods somehow. Your body's gonna process them different because of your gut biome and your genetic makeup, and it we're, we're gonna produce a different smell somehow, right? Like is it is it a is it based on our diet or is it just that like everybody just smells different and I've believe me I've come across a few people that did not win the smell lottery. Uh, why I don't know, man. I mean, it, 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 it's 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 a thousand things. Uh, I, I I mean, <clears throat> your your DNA is uh, completely different. I mean, you're like a you're like a snowflake. It's, you're, you're unique. That's the best way I can do it. The best way I can say it. Why do you yeah, smell I differently? Heard. I don't know. Because you don't fucking spray two cans of Axe on your nipples and <laughs> have them flicked off. Although it did seem like everyone in a middle school locker room did come out smelling the same way for a good like yeah. six year stretch. Uh, but no, Man, I mean, it, I, it's just like, um, people sweat differently. People, people digest differently. People, I mean, we could eat the same meal and we could, if you want to, we could compare turds an hour and a half later and be like, damn, that's kind of <clears> dainty. An hour and a half late, an hour and a half later, <laughs> I, you should really go see a specialist. <laughs> well, you know, I was tinkering around with a shot glass the other day and, uh, <laughs> An hour and a half later, it's still gonna, it's still gonna come out like exactly as it went in. <laughs> Whole pepperonis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very what? Much. The whole pepperonis? Do you agree with that? Whole pepper, uh, whole thing. Exactly I, like <laughs> exactly like it went in. But no, uh, uh, to answer the question, it's genetic for the most part, and what we eat and shit can influence what we smell like. But it's largely genetic, which is why twins smell the same. Yeah. Man, twins. Yeah, and like I, you can change like I mean if you're like sick, you'll smell different. So that's why like animals can tell. You know what I mean? Because their senses yeah. smell different. Like they can kind of like I don't know if, if you've ever had a dog that's like just kind of knows you're getting sick and is like, oh, I'm gonna be more affectionate towards you. It's like it knows. Yeah, that is wild. I actually had that happen to me last week. Uh, I had a little yep. tummy ache in the dog that uh, I'm great friends with. By the way, I mean me and him. <laughs> Your home, your so, homeboy. Yeah, we get along so well. He, 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 uh, he was nuzzling up. So, Alan, I've seen Wes and that dog interact one time, <laughs> and I understand that Wes is the problem. Oh no, but yeah, absolutely. Every time, every time we go, we like went over there or for anything. Kelly would be like, ah, "Them, t- them two, Wes and that dog," and I'm like, "Yeah, it's Wes. It's just Wes. Wes." I'm, is the I'm not the. <sighs> Fuck, fuck both of you. Look, the dog uh, is a dick. All right. Yeah. Sorry, Sarah. The dog's your dog's a dick. Uh, I mean, his name's Gideon. So what did you expect? Uh, but fucking Wes does not help the situation. He inflames the situation. And that dog's a dog and not a smart one. I watched <laughs> I watched Wes take his hand and just like take spread fingers like right across his face and just like 
<laughs> and then yelled at the dog when the dog got all pissy about it. <laughs> it's, there's a backstory to that, probably. We probably wouldn't no. stop fucking barking or sniffing or getting my here's shit. The, here's the backstory. Wes drank like three glasses of wine and, and like, I don't know, like a rocks glass of whiskey. Here's the backstory. <laughs> fucking, no, no. No, I refuse to believe that. Uh, fuck it. Well, and that, my <laughs> friends, is your Fun Fact Friday. Uh, shit. All right, let's see. 105. Before you go, folks, hey, listen, uh, the Masters Tournament is coming up here in a couple weeks. Um, and it's not going to be with, it's going to be without one of its, uh, one of its favorite, uh, people who compete in this tournament because you couldn't think of a better word uh, at this moment in time. Phil Mickelson, uh, three times Master winner. Will not be competing. This will be the first time since 1994, and this comes amidst some serious controversy. Okay, so uh, Mickelson, a nine-time, uh, nine-time Grand Slam winner, uh, was quoted as saying, "And this is in lieu of Saudi Arabia." Now, first of all, this isn't the first time a foreign country from the Middle East has dabbled into creating what they would deem like a all-star golf tournament. They're going to get like 30 of the best players in the world and just chuck millions and millions of dollars out of them and steal them from the PGA Tour. All right. This is this is not new, but Saudi Arabia was kicking the tires on one. And Mickelson said, described the, scat- the Saudis as, quote, scary, but he was looking uh, past our controversial history of human right violations to gain leverage with the PGA Tour. Callaway paused his sponsorship. Uh, KG, uh, KBMG, Amstel Light, and Workday ended their relationship with him. Uh, then he, you know, he he apologized. He actually had a good quote. I'll I'll say it later. This is pretty wild to me. First of all, your thoughts on this whole situation? Okay, hold on. As the golf novice here, yeah. So, okay, what does that have to do with him, though, not participating in the Masters? Is it like a competing tournament? Like, they're no. happening at the same time? Maybe it, like, he, they do one versus the other? He's, he, it's basically, uh, he doesn't want to bring any type of controversy to the Masters. His, his, likely, his, his agent and or someone who advises him says, don't go there. You're under a lot of heat right now. This tour doesn't even exist that, that he was talking about. This one in Saudi Arabia. Alan, you go ahead. I, cause I'm, 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 I'm not saying you didn't explain it well. I'm just saying like I'm still confused by yeah. that. Okay, so logic. So we'll we'll run it down, and I'll see if I can give you a little backstory. So I think we touched on it maybe a couple weeks ago, where the Saudi Arabians were like trying to start their own golf league, essentially a competitor to the PGA Tour. And this isn't the the uh, the United UAE has tried this. Yeah. Uh, a couple other Middle Eastern buku buck countries yeah. have tried to do this. Yeah. Um, just trying to create something to compete with the PGA Tour because even in recent times, a lot of people, even players, have complained about the PGA Tours. Just like some of their rules and their strictness, the way they pay out is a major concern um, and things like that. So anyway, there was rumblings of a league starting and Saudi Arabia trying to poach like some of the bigger names in P- in the PGA, Phil Mickelson being one of them. Then he kind of uh, got outspoken, as Phil does, and said some things that he probably shouldn't have said uh, and some things he just said the wrong way. Um, so he got all the flack for it as as, as today's culture would dictate. Um, so he lost his sponsorships and all that shit. And he is obviously eligible to go to the Masters as a previous winner and all that stuff. So he could he could go. I'm assuming his agent told him not to go. And I'm going to throw the other wrench in here is that I've heard of a conspiracy theory is that he may actually be formally suspended from the PGA Tour. The PGA Tour is one sports organization that does not announce suspensions of tour members. So it is entirely possible he's suspended and we just don't know. And he's playing the PR game and saying, hey, you know, I'm just going to stay away so that I don't cause a headache. But nonetheless, his first one, missed one since 1994. Yeah. Major one of the major personalities in golf. You know what I mean? I think he was in that yeah. top, what, five or ten in the peep, the, the pip money. Yeah. Like that was so oh, just a short sidebar. They started last year giving money away for like 
players is influence in like social media and marketing and advertising. So they get like a little bit of a bonus if they help build the brand of golf. Phil Mickelson, obviously major name. So he got money. So not a small thing. It wasn't like the 152nd guy in the world. It's fucking Phil Mickelson. Uh, hmm. And yeah, it's kind of crazy to not see him there, but yeah. Well, they also think, the ma- the Masters is so embedded in tradition. They li- they like to have their old champs there. They always exactly. want the old the former champions donning the green jackets, parading yeah, around. Yeah, that's the big thing for the Masters too. They do a champions dinner. Yeah, like the night you know the the leading up to the tournament where all past champions come, and the most recent one is the one who like picks the menu. So it's a big whole fucking pomp and circumstance. Right. And you know, with um, Matsu- yeah. Matsuyama as the reigning champ, that shit's gonna be money. That motherfucker's gonna have some fucking great dinner. Jap- Japanese wagyu. Yeah. Uh, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if fuck I it. were him, I'd put fucking like like ink squid and fucking like just octopus on the menu. Yeah, like, I was gonna say guys, I'd make all those whip. I'd make all those old white dudes squirm in their fucking seats. It's like, ooh. Nah, it would be like, <laughs> it would be like fucking Buffet Panda Express, and I wouldn't come. <laughs> Enjoy. So, yeah, the, uh, it, uh, a lot of this ha- like ha- has to do with, again, Mickelson's explanation about uh, Saudi Arabia's controversial past and human history rights, saying that's scary, but I can look past it in order to gain leverage on the PGA Tour to either pay us more or fuck it, we'll, we'll, oh. we'll go to this league. Okay, fuck all that. I think Alan's point is correct. I, I, I think you're right, Alan. I think that if the PGA doesn't announce suspension of its players, then that's exactly what's going on. That it's a bad, it's a, it's a very transparent explanation as to why he's not going to be showing up to this year's Masters. Because the layman... I would okay because since Tiger's not in the game anymore, Phil is the only reason I'm going to tune in. As a sideline fan, he's the only reason I'm going to watch. He's at the end of his, he he's at the end of his dominance. So it, you know, whenever a player is at the end of their career, I pay attention to him. I, I I root for the underdog. Now Phil Mickelson, not the front runner of anything, the underdog, as he, as he ages out of the game, and so that that's the only reason I would tune in. Otherwise. Fuck all that, man. Fuck all that. I'm tired of, like, geopolitical nonsense being, like, the barometer for, like, what's right and what's wrong anymore. We put gasoline in our cars from Saudi Arabia. Until we stop doing that, eh, all this other stuff. I don't know, man. It's bullshit. It's all bullshit. I think the court of public opinions version of it is different. It's more heavily leaning on like his comments and what he said, whereas I think the PGA was just like, listen, motherfucker, you tried to hurt our pocketbook, and that's not how we fucking roll. Uh, You know, so it's very different, like two different opinions of it. Like, yeah, he was, I mean, look, Phil Phil says some Phil shit, and Phil said some Phil shit, you know? He was like, you could fucking string up Jamal Khashoggi from a fucking lamppost if you want to. I don't care. Pay me money. And they were like, whoa, brother, you can't. Hey, easy. We get hey, it. Cover girls, but, like, we're coming to you fresh face from home. Remember oh, that? Fresh face. Ooh, is that mm, clear like fresh face. What you got? <laughs> that, that was on the ESPN uh, the thing, the thing that I was reading on, from. On the ESPN. So, so essentially he was trying to, like, in a way, like, unionize, like, use a union bully tactic against the PGA to get players paid more money. I, I, I get it. And, it, and the PGA is like, hey, fuck you, then don't play. But I think it's going to affect their bottom line because I don't know any other player. I honestly, I don't know any other players in the PGA right now. Until Tiger makes his, like, 50th comeback, I won't know a player in the PGA. Is, uh, is, the, is the McElroy, is he still in there? Yeah, the the McElroy. I'm glad you uh, caught him that. Uh, I I think one thing that that's worth noting with this is that Phil's a degenerate gambler. Okay, uh, <laughs> anyone who play who, who plays pla- practice rounds with him and things like that, he that that guy that guy is constantly wagering money. So to have what he described as an off the record conversation about, hey, I can look past this country's shady slash really shitty. Uh, uh, pass in terms of civil rights to in order to gain leverage for the PGA to pay us more money. I, I mean, <clears throat> is he is he bad for saying that? I don't know. I, I doubt it. No, I, I mean, 
I just I find it silly. I find it very silly that the PGA Tour is now hang now making him a poster child for hey you can't speak out against us. He wasn't speaking out against them. He was saying, look, I could see past a c- country that shits look, on their people that, uh, <laughs> that pay us yeah, millions think, and millions of dollars. <laughs> I think there were other major names. You didn't do also, it. I think there were also other major names also talking to them because the Saudis were like, yo, we are filthy fucking rich and we'll pay you. And like, keep in mind, like the difference is, is they were like, dude, we'll give you a salary like a professional athlete. Like you don't just have to fucking spend your own money to fly to Florida to play and maybe win some money, but maybe also not. But then play your own money again to fly to California to do it all over again. No, we'll pay you to go play golf and do it on television because that's what makes us money. You know what I mean? So I don't blame a lot of these guys because we all, any of us who watch the PGA know that, yeah, these guys are well paid, but a lot of it doesn't come from the fucking purses. It comes from their advertisements and all of that shit. And they're making significantly less money playing a sport that probably brings in as much money as some of the larger ones. Uh, And yeah, I don't, I don't blame a lot of them for it, but you know, when you, when you shit on your employer to a fucking, you know, another employer over in Saudi Arabia, you might get get a little into a little bit of trouble. You might get the fucking chop. And I'm not talking about fucking foreskin. God damn it. But in a way, but in a way he like, if, if, if I'm understanding how you just explained it, he's really not shitting on his employer. He he's just good enough to be qualified for their league. They're not paying him. He's only, yeah. he, they're only paying him if he wins or places in a certain area of the field. And so what you're saying is the Saudi Arabia is like willing to say, like, ah, right, listen, we're going to pay all of you yeah. if you're in our league. Yeah. And, so, and the PGA Tour is like, we're only going to pay you what you earn. Yeah, based no. on where you place. No, I, I agree with you well, on that. And it's more just like, I mean, you've got to read some of his comments because he had a long statement. And, you know, the, the, he, does kind of, he does take a little jabs at the, the PGA, and he has in the past. Uh, and so he's got a little bit of a track record of pissing off the boss. Uh, this time he was just like, I'm going to go fucking hang out with the Oriole dictators, bro. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, PGA well, Tour was like, yeah. These, these, uh, not just this league, but the other ones. I think there there was one like a year and a half ago, or just pre COVID, uh, that was out of the UAE, and they were talking about the thirty best players in the world, and it, and, it, and it rotates every year. Like they evaluate it, and either they kick you out or kick you. Imagine that. Like basically, you can't compete anywhere else. You can't compete in the PGA Tour. We take the thirty best players in the world. You, we dump them here in this in this tournament, or the or not the, in this league that lasts a season. The P- and you can't compete anywhere else. You're not going to compete in the PGA Tour, but then we have the right to kick you out because we just want the 30 best. PGA Tour then said, if you ever compete in that league, you're never welcome to come back to the PGA Tour. That was the, that was kind of their counter, and that's why that that league fizzled out. Well, it's interesting because soccer did something, tried to do something similar. In I, I saw that, yeah, with the, this like kind of and, like yeah, phony and the European, like, yeah. And European soccer was like, <laughs> absolutely not. You can't do that. And look, who the fuck am I, right? My team, my soccer team got bought by the Saudis. So we're, we're, we're filthy, stinking rich. We're fucking kill American journalists rich. I'm okay <laughs> with it. Like, I mean, it sucks. I mean, we could, I, I guess I could have Mother Teresa, but we'd be broke. You know what I mean? So do I want my professional sports team to be able to buy fucking the Lamborghinis of humans? Sure. Absolutely. I do. Because we've been buying fucking Geo Metros of humans <laughs> and fucking sometimes not even buying them, leasing Geo Metros and giving them back after like a season. Fucking terrible. So cool. Sign me up, I guess. I, I just want to start car- compartmentalizing like what we do. Phil Mickelson plays golf. Yeah. Let him play golf. Yeah. End of story. And 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 what a sad what a sad saga to end damn near a thirty year fucking run. Like somebody who's helped build your brand. Lefty. I mean, I don't even care about golf. But if you said if you if I walked into a bar and they said who's lefty, I'd be like, Phil Mickelson. How much how much how much Phil Mickelson golf have you watched? I don't know. Thirty minutes. Lifetime. He's been playing my entire life. I've watched 30 minutes of Nicholson golf. A ton. Yeah. You're right. You're right. 
He'll be back though. It's just, it's, it's gonna be this year. Just in time for the PGA Championship because he's gonna be yeah, the be defending back. champion, and if PGA doesn't want doesn't. They're not gonna have, yeah. not have their defending champion. They're not back gonna out. have them. To, yeah, exactly. Like, not a shot. <clears throat> Money always talks. Yeah. All he'll, right. He'll, he'll be back. Alan, where can you find the middle class holes? Find us on the motherfucking internet, guys. No, right. Fucking US, US Mexico's on. I hate your faces. No. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, at MDL Class Holes. Facebook, the, the middle class holes. Fucking TikTok, the middle class holes. Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, the middle class holes. Email, tickleourtummies at gmail.com. This is the fucking concise version. Yeah. Bam. Go USA. Go. Go USA. USA. <laughs> You're going to get that recording version. All right, folks. Well, hey, look, I, I ain't got no COVID shit. Don't don't get caught taking. <clears throat> Actually, I can't do that anymore. Fuck it's it. Over now. Uh, don't get caught. I don't know. Manufacturing, don't know. slanging, bootlegging, COVID vaccination yep. cards. Or, I, I, oh, man, I hope. I hope you know what? I'll... As we enter into a, a, a realm of some normalcy, don't. Be the guy who like coughs into your open hand or like don't you can feel the sneeze coming. I get it. Sometimes they're fucking they sneak up on you. But like flee like uh, uh, one of these guys, not like just please. Like I've I, I've got I guess because of two years of this, I've become acutely aware. Like today I was at a networking event and like I didn't pay attention. So I didn't get a seat in the back like the, the cool kid in class. And I was like, I'm not going to sit in front. And it's not because I don't want to be the dork. It's because I don't want 40 people breathing on me from behind. <laughs> that, like that's what I, that was the thought that entered my head. I was just like, Ugh, you fucking meat sacks. Like, so, yeah. Hey, you know what? And it. it, it silver linings here all right yeah i like where you're going with this look i have to walk into a lot of doctor's offices on a daily basis you know what i do i put my mask on yeah you know why those people are sick they don't know why that's why they're at the doctor's office and, they, you know and, and they're lying yeah, the to their PSA doctors should be, the psa should be wear your mask if you feel like you want to wear your mask and don't feel, wear your mask if you don't want to wear your mask but don't be a dick and judge people who are wearing masks or who aren't wearing masks unless they're in a bank or driving in their car unless unless they're sneezing or coughing openly without covering their mouths then punch them in the fucking mouth and then give them a mask kindly <laughs> and then there will be blood coming from their mouth uh so it'll be worse and the mask will sop it up it'll be good boom like a business middle class souls everyone enjoy your time love y'all